On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, Corner Pinning in ProPresenter 6. Hi, and welcome again to the churchtechhouse.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I help you with the software that we use in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. So there's all kinds of features that you're going to use in ProPresenter week in and week out. This is probably not one of them, unless you're part of a mobile church that sets up and tears down a projector every week. But in general, for most churches that don't do that, You'll set this up when you upgrade to a new version of ProPresenter or when you get a new projector. Perhaps when you change out the lamp if you're not as careful as you should be. But in general, it's not something you're going to do a lot. So let's head over to my computer. I'll show you how to use corner pinning and I'll try and remember which direction you have to move it and stuff because you know, you use it so rarely that I'm liable to make a mistake. So let's head over and take a look. Normally, what I would recommend is you would do any keystone correction in the projector itself. The advantage of doing this is whether you're using ProPresenter or not, it will be correct on the screen. But maybe you're in a situation where you're only using ProPresenter and you're in a situation where your projector doesn't have keystone correction or doesn't have adequate keystone correction. If that's the case, you might try the corner pinning feature in ProPresenter. So let's head on over to this top menu up here, ProPresenter, then Preferences. Now once we get there, we're going to want to click on this second tab, Display. And now what we'll do is you'll see that I already have corner pinning checked. Probably won't be checked for you, so you'll want to check that. Then you'll want to click on this little gear to the right here. Okay, now that's going to bring up a set of coordinates. You'll notice that we have, they kind of match here. So the main output, by the way, you can't do this for the stage display. This is the main output only. Also, you can't do this with uh, SDI displays. So keep that in mind. This is just for a, a native display. So, um, by the way, the one that I'm using is coming out um, mini display port to VGA. So just for reference sake. So we have 1280 top right corner so that's pixel 1280. Uh, bottom left is 720 so so we just imagine that where you're seeing it this is the screen and it's Zero, 00 starts up here to 1280 by 720 down here. Well, 0, 1280 is the top right corner. 0, 720 is the bottom left corner. And 1280, 720 is the lower right. So let's say, for example, that we're shooting from a very low angle up and we're very close to the screen so what you would expect is that the bottom since it's close to the screen is smaller than the top so what we're going to want to do is leave the top as big as it can be and then make the bottom much smaller so let's say we do 500 and uh, so that's the bottom left corner that'll um, move that to about here. So let's 
So let me think here just a second. I might have told you wrong. Yeah, zero. Okay. So actually, I did tell you wrong. What I want to do is I want to move this one in 200 pixels. So that will move from over here in 200 pixels over here. Bottom right, again, we want to deal with this. So um, we would go move this one in, again, another 200 pixels. So we'll subtract that from there and click OK. And what you can't see is that it did, in fact, make the top uh, very wide and the bottom kind of narrow. Um, let me actually tweak this because, yep, there we go. You have to, and this is a, an important lesson, you have to get off the box that you're editing for this to take effect. So right now I'm going to go take a screenshot so that you can see what this looks like. So there we go. So that is the screenshot of what this looks like. Now, by contrast, let's say you're shooting up, uh, you're, the projector's being flown and it's very close to the top. So, um, and I think I did those backwards as well. So if it, so the first one is actually you're flying the projector. It's very close to the top, so it needs to be wider. And at the bottom, where it's wider, it needs to be the same or narrower. So this is the way that you would do that. Doing it the other way around, so we'll remove this. Actually, a better way is just to click Reset, and that brings everything back to the way that it is. When you click OK, then you see that up on the screen itself. So this is back to normal. Now, we start, despite what I said earlier, we actually started with it flying. So now we're going to start with it on a cart, close but shooting up at a very high angle. So in this case, it is very narrow at the bottom and wide at the top, so we need to compensate by doing the opposite, start and make it um, wide at the bottom and narrow at the top. So top left up here, zero, zero and zero. So we want it to stay tall, that's the x, uh, coordinate, I believe. No, 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 that's the Y. Yes. So the Y is uh, the height. So we want to just affect this one. And in this case, let's take that in 200 pixels. And the right, we'll take in another 200 pixels. Again, click on something else and click OK. Okay, now when, when I do that, it makes the bottom very wide and the top narrower. You might have to tweak this a few times, but it doesn't actually show up on your screen until you click OK like I just did there. So you'll have to go back and forth until you get it exactly right. Um, maybe you need to make it wider on one side than the other because it's not exactly square. Maybe you need to do all kinds of craziness. I don't know, but that just gives you a sense of what you can do with corner pinning in ProPresenter 6. Well, I hope that helped you. I hope that that was one of those features you didn't even know that ProPresenter had, or you may not have known how to use it in, a, in what situation. So that's corner pinning, and I hope that it helps uh, your church. If you like this content, by all means, uh, first off, leave a comment under the video, which you can do over at trinitydigitalmedia.com. You can also join my email newsletter there, 
and uh, I'm right in the middle of doing launching some uh, exciting new courses on ProPresenter, so I'd love for you to join me there. And until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. And I just realized I don't think I told you the web address. It's TrinityDigitalMedia.com slash newsletter to subscribe to the newsletter, find out about those courses, and get free stuff, including a beginner's ProPresenter 5 or ProPresenter 6 class, your choice, all for free. Until next time, go out and change eternity. Thank <laughs> you.